Today I'm gonna to teach you the infinite herb hack. It's super simple and you can do it at your house with almost any herb. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna be saving some of this rosemary here and we're gonna be applying the infinite herb hack to this rosemary. Now you can do this with almost any herb. I say almost because it needs to have a woody stem. If it doesn't have a woody stem, this is not going to work because we're actually gonna be propagating these, believe it or not. We're gonna be rooting them and taking them indoors. Now, why would you do that? Well, there's a couple reasons. So the first reason is because this rosemary here, under normal growing conditions, will not survive the winter for us here in Michigan. It's super beautiful, it's grown a ton. We wanna save it, maybe grow it indoors. So we're gonna be taking it indoors and rooting it so we can actually grow it. Now, if you were to just dig up this plant, dig this whole plant up and move it indoors, it would surely die. And that's because rosemary doesn't transplant well, but it does root very well. And so we're gonna root these cuttings and actually take them indoors where we can then uh, grow them and enjoy them. And then um, we can actually transplant them outside. They move outside very well. They don't move inside very well. And so you can do this with rosemary. You could even do this with some sage. Sage roots very well. You could do this with basil. Any type of woody stem propagates very well. You cannot do this with things like parsley. You cannot do this with things like cilantro. They have very soft stems. That soft tissue does not root, whereas this woody tissue does. The second reason why you might wanna do this is just to get more plants. You can actually double, triple, quadruple the amount of plants you have because it only takes one plant. And as you can see from this one plant, you can then turn that into 30, 40, 50 cuttings, which then you can take cuttings from those. And from one plant, you can literally have a rosemary farm. So you can multiply your plants to either take them to market, make quick side income, or give them away to friends and family, or just grow more plants in your garden. Whew, it is cold out here. If you're wondering, Luke, what time of year is it? Because you're in a t-shirt. Yeah, it's mid-December. It's 30 degrees. It's actually snowing. So I'm freezing my butt off for you. So make sure if you're still watching this video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out, helps spread the video around, and helps more people get this amazing information. So thank you. And now that we've got our cuttings that we need, let's head inside. All right, next step, we have to actually take and prep these cuttings. They're far too large, which is great because we can actually enjoy some in cooking, but they're far too large to propagate. What we really want is basically like the top, about the top two and a half inches or so. So we want a cutting that's only gonna be about this large. And we don't want leaves all the way down. So we're gonna actually take them and pull them off because that's going to give us something we can actually root to. It also really helps if you go, to, if you go up higher on the plant because that newer growth is gonna be really ready to grow, whereas that slightly older, woodier growth is gonna be more ready to root. If you go too high on the plant and it's very loose and floppy like this, it's not gonna root very well. But you'll notice this has way less bend to it. That woodiness is really, really great for rooting different cuttings. All right, so once you get your cutting to size, there's one additional step here that can really help increase your success when taking these uh, rootings inside. You don't have to do this, but I find that getting a little scrape helps to uncover some of that, some of that green cambium layer. See that right there? Once you get that green cambium layer, that can really help. Now you don't have to do this. It's not a requirement. I've gotten stuff to root just fine without doing that, but taking off that outer layer there, it's that green. That green will root so much faster in my experience than by not doing it. So that is it. I'm gonna prep all these. We're gonna take them into the grow room and get them rooting. All right, so we're back in the grow room and we are ready to start rooting these cuttings. So what you see here is basically the, the ready to go system that we have, but I'll kind of break it down so it's simple for you to understand. These right here, these are rock wool cubes. Now, they weren't already this small. We cut them to this size. And what we did was we took a two inch rock wool cube, we soaked it in water. It's really important you soak it in water because if you don't, you're gonna have a lot of that rock wool dust. These are basically really finely spun bits of strands of essentially glass, almost like fiberglass. And, and uh, it has a lot of surface area which holds onto water really well like a sponge. And it's a soilless growing medium that allows you to grow plants um, without the risk of things like rot, mold, mildew, and whatnot. So we were cutting that, and you wanna moisten it before you cut it. We cut it into half-inch blocks so they can fit into our half-inch cells here. And then we took them and we put them into a holeless seed tray. Now this holeless seed tray is really important because it's going to hold excess water, as you can see. It's got some water in there. 
And what that's going to do is going to allow for a lot of humidity because dehydration is your enemy when, uh, when talking about cuttings. Cuttings do not like to dry out. If they do, they will not root and they will die. And so to assist in that, we also have here a humidity dome, which is gonna go on top. It's gonna trap all that excess moisture in the air and really help these leaves to not dry out because rosemary takes a little while longer to root. If you're rooting something like basil, you might only need to have uh, basil in this system for, I don't know, maybe a week to two weeks before it's already ready to rock. Whereas rosemary will take around three to five weeks to fully root and be ready to go. And so this system right here is just temporary. It's gonna allow us to root our cuttings and then afterwards we're gonna pop them out. We can throw them into a hydroponic system or we can take them and throw them into soil and grow them that way. So this is just to get our rootings going. All right, so we're gonna do two more things to get these cuttings ready to go. The first thing is we're going to get them wet. Now we're gonna dip them into some water, just like that. And then we're gonna dip them from the water into our rooting hormone. Now this rooting hormone, when it coats the stem, will actually have a hormone that will encourage root growth. And we're gonna stick these all the way down, just like that. Now, you don't have to use rooting hormone. You can use something like honey. Honey is not going to encourage root development. Honey basically sterilizes the stem, kills off any bacteria and mold because it's a very acidic environment and will actually prevent things like rotten mold. So people have used honey to do cuttings. That works fairly well. But um, honey will not encourage root development. It just keeps the environment kind of uh, very sterile, which is important. You don't want any mold, any rot, any mildew, things like that, because you're gonna lose a lot of your, you're gonna lose a lot of your cuttings. So we're just gonna come in here, dip all these, and then when they're all done, we'll, mo we'll move on to the next step. Now, I know you're probably asking the question, Luke, I don't happen to have any rock wool on hand. Is there anything else that'll work? You can, you can use something called vermiculite. Vermiculite is just an expanded volcanic rock. It's found very commonly in potting mixes. Basically, it has a ton of surface area. It's sterile, so it's not gonna, it's gonna be very much just like rock wool. It has a lot of surface area. It's gonna hold on to moisture. And you essentially can just fill a little pot with it, fill a little cup with it, and then take your cuttings and stick them in just like that, just into a little pot full of vermiculite, and that's gonna work very much the same. You can also use sand. Sand works very well. Now, don't use any sand. Make sure you go use some sand that is nice and clean. If you, if you don't have clean sand, rinse it under some water, get it nice and clean, get it to run completely clear, and then take it and throw it in the oven at 350 degrees because you want it to be sterile. You have to have a nice sterile environment. Otherwise, it's going to, uh, it's going to have a lot of mold and bacteria on it and your cuttings are really going to, they're gonna suffer. So you can use sand as well. Both those will work, but I find rock wool, in my experience, just works the best because it allows for the, uh, it allows for the, the moisture to be really evenly distributed. But one nice thing about sand, I will say, is that sand, when the roots start to form in these, the roots are going to actually get tangled up in this rock wool. And so they become kind of one with the rock wool. With sand, you can pull that out then the sand basically falls off the roots. You can then move that into soil very easily, or you can then move it into rock wool or another hydroponic system super simply. So sand has some benefits as well, but just kind of try it out and see which one works best for you. Basically, they don't need any, any nutrients. So that's probably the next question you're asking is what about fertilizer? They won't need any nutrients. They're basically just gonna be growing in here first. And then once they form roots, then we'll give them some nutrients. But up until that point, they're just basically surviving. All right, so we just switched it out. We went to a deeper holeless seed tray. As you can see, this one is only about like an inch deep down to a, a true kind of a two and a half inch deep seed tray here. This is still holeless, but these are going to set down a little bit deeper and that's going to close that gap, which I am very happy that I did that because now it's just, there's less, there's less, uh, there's less of a gap here, which looks better. And the, the rosemary is not quite as smushed to the top. So glad I did that. That definitely was a good move. Um, having a gap's not bad. It's just, again, it's gonna dry out a little faster. But the thing I didn't like is that a lot of the foliage on these taller ones were smushing up against the plastic. 
And that's not great either because they're going to stay wet all the time. So they have a higher chance of thing, growing things like mold or rot. So I like to have a nice tiny bit of clearance. Um, and if they touch a tiny bit, that's not the end of the world, but they were smushed. So this is much, much better. Very, very happy with this. And so periodically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and water, keep it nice and damp. I'll also find that if it, um, if it uh, just needs water for humidity, I'll just water down below. Make sure you don't exceed that, those little channels because you don't want it flooding the plants all the time. Just a little bit of humidity is great. And over the course of about five to seven hours, this is going to start to get nice and foggy. You don't have to really worry that much. I'm going to put it underneath some grow lights, but any light's going to help. A sunny window underneath the grow light. They really don't need that much light to grow because right now they're not focusing on promo or, you know, promoting foliage growth. They're just trying to get rooted. And so I'm just going to put them underneath some grow lights here. Nothing too crazy. If it gets all foggy and, and hazy from that humidity, that's fine too. Again, they're just focusing on root development. So right now you can, you can basically treat them just like a seed. So seeds don't need a whole lot of light to grow. Um, they don't need really anything other than moisture and uh, good growing conditions. So these are going to be great. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I really do hope that you take advantage of this infinite herb loop. It really is a secret to unlocking free plants and getting a ton of plants because this was just one plant worth of cuttings. And we got 32 cuttings here of which 60 to 70% of them are going to take. And so we're going to have a boatload of free plants that we didn't have before. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care.